with Unilever's 57% of its sales in emerging markets. I also asked, Paul, how the slowdown that we've seen in key markets like China and Brazil have affected him. And although they've had an increase, a 10.3% increase in sales in those areas, he did concede that those markets are really quite difficult still. It's a consistent theme that's coming through on earnings season now. BASF warned today the world had slower growth in Asia since the fourth quarter of 2011. This slowdown that's playing through, how concerning do you think it is for corporate profits? I, I think there is, I mean, uh, last year most of the uh, profit were driven by emerging market. This, uh, this year is, is the opposite. I mean, if we look at the result of Unilever in Brazil, in Turkey, in Indonesia, uh, there is pressure. Uh, there is pressure in terms of pricing and there is pressure in, ter in terms of volume. So it, it's, it's not yet dragging down the company, but you can't expect the same level of growth as you could uh, You've got to start thinking few about years from ago. a macro perspective too, don't you? I mean, the UK market is one that's been told to go and chase growth in Asia, yeah. go and make those deals with the Chinese, and it's doing that now, yet China's pressing on the brakes. Isn't this going to, I guess, trim some of the growth we might have expected here in the UK? Um, well, I think perhaps prospects for UK consumers are improving. Um, we could see a bit of a, a further recovery in consumer spending. In fact, hopefully inflation will ease quite quickly in the second half of this year, supporting an increase in real earnings. So I think it'd be wrong for companies to fully rule out uh, increases in sales in, in, the, in the domestic market here in the UK. I think, I think, though, we do have a lot of PLC companies that have emerging markets earnings, and we've been relying on those. I mean, if you look at Unilever, uh, Europe and, and uh, America slow down 1.3 percent so it's relying more and more really on that emerging market growth and if that comes down and it's not just Unilever I mean look they they have Marmite and tea and hair products and every, almost everything we have in our household but a lot of UK PLC is going to be affected by this slowdown the reality is though you have to keep on getting that organic growth don't you in China you need to keep growing the business there and if competition starts to come into the fore from the domestic players that's when you've got strife for these companies and you have to have a good set of product I mean if you look if you analyze the result of Unilever uh, home care product are up double digit and food uh, is up only one percent so you know the, uh, the, uh, the the product offering market by market have to be really yeah, I think it's interesting actually so in, I was asking about the food products area and things like spreads which are hugely important obviously they don't sell in emerging markets that much they they sell the you know your floor in in, in uh, Europe and in states and when you don't have that emerging market growth you have problems but whereas products like Tresemme hair care where they've launched in Brazil have really done well and helped the company grow also the sunshine about Brazilian hair but sunshine and ice cream that's also a key mix for Unilever of course it is um to a more serious point the reputation seems to be really important. You've been talking about Glaxo all week. We just had this flash that we've been showing that uh, the Chinese Commerce Ministry is saying the Glaxo investigation won't affect China, FDI. But reputation is something that the Western companies really rely on in the likes of China. And if you start to destroy that, doesn't that just remove the edge that Western companies have and the profitability? Historically, uh, Unilever always had a strong history of uh, corporate responsibility. So uh, I'm not too sure what, would, what could be the impact if, we, if they, they would be a negative impact uh, in developing in developing economy or in China. Uh, in terms of corporate responsibility, I think the, one of the risks is probably in Europe. I mean, uh, the food labeling, for example, in UK, uh, the government tried to introduce, you know, the uh, traffic light system, and a lot of companies like Nestle approved this labeling. Only, I mean, few companies did not approve. It was Coca-Cola and Unilever, and I think it's a bit at odd with the usually the high level of corporate res responsibility. I think, I think you're right in the multi nationals risk has become increasingly important for all multinationals and the reputational risk and supply chain risk uh, is, is, is a big part of the focus going forward. Mm -hmm. Guys we're going to wrap this up. Uh, Samuel Team, UK economist at Capital Economics, thank you for joining us on the GDP numbers today um, and also Helia, we'll see you a bit later in the show.